3D printed guns. I mean, people have been talking about 3D printed guns for a while now. It was like, oh man, they can slip them into the airport because they're ceramic or plastic and, you know, but then of course you need metal bullets. I, I don't know the whole thing about that, but, you know, and then there was that image that was floating around with just like the one shooter. I don't know. It looked like a, I don't know, a half plastic brick. Do you right. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the Liberator. Is that what it's called? The Liberator? Right there. Do you have, oh, you have one right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want to close right, so up? Yeah, here. Let me uh, let me see if I can just let me give you just the screen. If you look back, oh yeah, go grab it. Yeah, grab that liberator. All right, so he's gonna go grab that and show us. This was the very first three D printed gun. Of course, you have it. Of course, you've of got course. one. Of course, okay. I've got oh, one. Oh, there it is. Yep. Now, how many My... times can you shoot that thing? Uh, I've never shot this, and I never will. <laughs> um... Because it was a sketchy. Yeah, it's it was it was never a great design uh, in the very beginning. Like it was functional, you could get it to shoot. Yeah. But it wasn't ideal for like a firearm. You know, you could get yeah. one shot off, but it might blow up. It might not. If you made it properly, um, you know, it, it sixty forty, you'd be fine. But okay. like, it's just one of those that j you just don't want to trust. Um, so this one was me nostalgically making one i had it signed by a couple of guys down at uh defense distributed and hmm. it's gonna hang on my wall <laughs> it's pretty cool i saw it you, you know it's signed there that's pretty sweet yeah uh, yeah so it, essentially it's just there's no metal parts in that then right is that is that the case uh, yeah there, there's gonna be one uh right there there would be a nail uh a trim down common house nail finishing nail oh um as like a firing pin Okay. But outside of that, and then your, you know, the the bullet that would sit in the the chamber there. Uh, aside from that, I mean, it's just plastic. Springs are plastic. Yeah. Entirely off the printer. So. Awesome. All right. So now, I mean, wow, three D printed guns have certainly come a long way, haven't they? Yeah, we've we've <laughs> gone quite a bit further. I'm, yeah, I'm see, you got. You got a collection there. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was saying, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I don't have my FGC9 put together. We're in the middle of some, some shenanigans with that one. Um, really? And some rebuilds that are going on with a, an updated version. So it's all torn apart and broken. But uh, yeah, that that's probably the pinnacle of like m the majority printed firearm. Um, it's, its claim is that there are no registered fire or no firearm components to it. Yeah. Um, so like the fire control group. You can swap it with an AR-15 one or an Airsoft one that you can order off like AliExpress oh, okay. and ship it almost internationally. I think Australia is the only place you can't get that fire control group because they banned it. But okay. everywhere else in the world is fine. Uh, the barrel we cut, we, we bore to size rifle and uh, chamber with basically salt water and uh, a, a power supply, a 12 volt power supply. You can do it in your kitchen sink or in your garage in a five gallon bucket. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And you can do that for less than like a hundred bucks and you can make all the barrels in the world. Um, so that's basically the one thing that's, that's currently needed for a 3d printed gun is the barrel. Basically. Yeah. The, well, the bolt in the barrel. Um, the so they're, they're, they're pressure bearing surfaces. They take the, the the majority of the explosive force from whatever projectile you have in there. Okay. Um, so yeah, the bolt, the barrel, are really the 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 components you absolutely really have to have as metal uh, yeah. for a, a reliable firearm in the long term. Interesting. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm curious. A lot of people in chat. I know this is a little side uh, side note. A lot of people are actually talking about how we might I I might actually get in trouble right now for. Oh yeah. For, for talking about well not i don't think it's necessarily talking about guns but maybe showing guns now hmm. i don't really understand necessarily why i mean i've seen there's videos on youtube all the time of people right. um, shooting guns and talking about guns and See, I, I don't mean, i don't scream much on youtube so i don't know any of the rules yeah i don't uh i honestly i'm still kind of a baby here in in the youtube world now i i don't um necessarily i'm not necessarily saying that i want to stop this conversation um because i don't think that uh i think this is an important conversation that needs to happen because 3d printed guns are happening you know right. they're and and laws are being laid out and one thing i've learned over the past three months or, or year essentially is 
we all got to be a part of this conversation. Whatever laws are being had, we got to know what it is. We got to understand the full right. complexities of everything that the laws are are about. You know, so I, you know, that's why. So I'm just, I just wanted to get that out. You know, YouTube, if you're listening, look, I just want to understand this. All right, I'm not advocating for anything. I'm just curious. And look, all right, that, ha have, having a visual model to show people this is what a 3D printed gun is. Yeah, is really helpful to like 99% of the audience on YouTube in the right, first. Right. Place. So yeah, well, it certainly looks like a, a a real gun. I mean, they are. They shoot. I mean, right. how long do they last? You know, is it? Uh, do they eventually degrade? Obviously, quicker than metal because it's plastic. But you know, what's the quality of the, of the plastics? Right. So the the black AR-15 here has about 800 rounds through it. The oh, bluish. Wow. Uh, Glock next to it has almost 300 now. Uh, this one here, the green one, is sitting at about 400, wow. I think. Um, and then, like, my 1022 down here, the pirate pistol. The pirate is, pistol. Right. On about 150. Uh, the high point is, I think, at 800 now. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, we can get up there if you design it properly. It's It's... It's, it's pure mechanics. So if yeah. you design properly and, and take your material strings into account, it's just like any other piece of engineering anywhere. Right on. So so even the springs can be plastic. You'd think that they need to be metal also, right? Yeah. M metal springs are generally better. Right. But I'm sure. Plastic will do. You know, right. it, it, again, if you design it appropriately, you can, yeah. you know, you can make the material work. 3D printed to. springs. Right. 3D printed springs. Interesting. 3D. So, now, do you make your own designs? Uh, some some of us do. So, uh, the the pirate pistol and the the high point here are mine. Okay. Um, the this one, this one are and this one are Freeman, and I don't remember who did the AR back there. Um, right on. Yeah, there there are quite a few of us knocking out designs and. and and tossing these around so it's it's hard to keep track <laughs> yeah, yeah that pirate pistol is cool i was looking at that one and uh yeah yeah pull that one out that one's pretty sweet so that that's a 3d printed pirate pistol it looks what is it uh, a 22 or yeah it's a uh, it's a ruger based on a ruger 1022 this is actually yeah. a, a this so technically speaking the firearm in this is not printed so this black part up here yeah that's metal this is metal this is an actual um actual 1022 receiver that i bought uh, okay. once upon a time we do yeah. have uh, printed ones that do work ah. oh okay um i had i haven't quite made the conversion yet i was still messing with this one but yeah but everything else on here outside of the receiver the bolts and the barrel and like the the charging system there yeah is wow. all printed. so you can make pretty much any gun out there right now and um, just 3D yeah. printing it. Just sit around and, and mess around with CAD software. You'll, you'll. Yeah. You'll get, I feel. I feel like just holding this for the rest of the. Show. Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably cool. You got that that cool pirate feel. You know, like you're uh, right. Takes you back. That's pretty sweet. So what what um, so you can buy just that specific part now. Do you need um a license for that part? Uh, the specific um, thing you were talking about, the receiver, is that what it's right. called? So, so the receiver, if you are to, you can buy it as just a regular dude and you have to fill out the 4473. Yeah. Um, you have to go to a gun shop, to an FFL to do it, and all, all the paperwork there. Um, if you printed it, and that's this is the draw for printing, at least in the, in the U.S., if you print it, you don't have to do any of that. Mm. You just make it at home. And... You didn't have to print in order to like 3D printing is not a re we're not revolution or we we are but we're not inventing this um, th this whole home building of your firearms has been around for a hundred years like people have yeah. been doing it for a long time any yeah. any tool and die maker coming out of the 60s made a gun at some point because he thought hey this is fun and he had the the equipment and the material to do it. We've just gotten gotten it to a point where it's a lot easier to accomplish in like a midtown Manhattan apartment in yeah. the middle of New York um, without raising too many questions from the neighbors. Interesting. So what do you what do you need? What do you need for it? You know, tell like for someone who wants to 
print a gun? Like, what is right. the what do you what do you need? Like, what are the requirements? Well, uh, we we wrote a guide. Uh, it's at theguide.controlpew.com. Oh, okay. And it it spells out get a printer. Um, these are Ender fives. You can get an Ender three. It's even cheaper. It's two hundred bucks or less. Oh wow! A spool, a spool of filament is twenty bucks. Um, Esun PLA plus. There are links in the guide. It'll 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 walk you through all of it, setting up your printer, calibrating it, and it takes you know a day or two to to, to sit there and, and and tweak your printer and get it uh get it calibrated properly. Um, but once you're there, then it's just you know you you go you download the files you. Uh, get the software that we told you to get and you slice the files so you can print them and then throw them on the printer. Awesome. What kind of, I mean, I'm sure it's not, it doesn't take just any of the, I don't know what, it, is it plastic or what would the material be? Like, what, what do you call it? What do you, if you go to a store, like I need a printer, is uh, it fil filament or wait, what is it? Filament, yeah. Um, filament, okay. Filament, that's the right word. Yeah. And then it's it's going to vary a little bit by what your what whatever printer you decide to go with is going to have a specific like type of filament or, or you know um, filament spec that it can work with. But okay. again, like we 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 like the Ender threes because they're cheap. We like the Sun PLA because it's cheap and consistent. And then you can just have all of this now. Now that um, that's na the names of the printers you're talking about right there. Yeah, the 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 Ender three is the name of the printer. Uh, okay. All right, right on. And then uh, with the filament, I mean, is there like a specific type of like hardness level or is just like all filament, filament? I don't know. I, I, I don't right. know anything so, so about 3D printing anything. So there, there's you know. about a dozen different kinds of carbon filament. There's PLA, there's PLA plus, there's ABS, there's PETG. I, I mean, there, there's a, it, it, they're all ver varying um Consistencies, hardness levels, or like what? Co compositions. Color? They're all varying compositions Composition. of different blends of different uh, polymers. Okay. Um, PLA plus is the one we found that works the best. It's okay. super cheap and it's pretty durable and pretty consistent. So Good combination. Um, all of these are PLA plus. Okay. Yeah. Are, is it, it now? Random question though. Is it yeah. is it recyclable? Can you reuse stuff that's been? Like say you misprint something and it's you got to scrap it. Is there can you send yeah, it to, to someone you, or can you crush it down and like refilament it? You you can. There are um, th there is hardware to let you do that. It's not quite a, a perfected uh, hardware yet. They're yeah, still okay. they're still working it out. Um, humidity is a problem uh, when you let a print sit around for a while and then you try and re extrude it. You have to re heat it back up to make it into a piece of filament and it the, the the moisture expands and bubbles and then you get inconsistent filament that leads to bad prints with it so it, it's it's a problem and it's being like sorted out um over time over time all things will will, will improve but uh yeah they're not quite there yet what is that tell me again what that manual is what, what did you say that was? Uh, it's the guide.controlpew.com dot control p you.com yep here we go i'm gonna i'm gonna pop this up for everyone to see real quick because this is uh oh it's it, you really it's really in depth here isn't it yeah we 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 go deep it's getting deeper i'm doing a video series on it now we're like gonna step you through all of it um so here's yeah. your this is your website here yep getting started getting started what kind of printer should i buy now what this is great wow okay so if you're interested i mean uh control pew here has got a full-on website and now we, that's we tried to spell it out and like make it make it really easy to get started so right on yeah that uh i mean it looks it looks fun i love putting stuff together and then i also <laughs> really love shooting stuff and i mean who doesn't right i mean right and actually I'm, I'm glad you have that that image up because uh oh yeah here let me bring it gold, back go ahead the gold gun up here this is the fgc9 mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier where okay. it's you know, the, the hardest parts, all the parts with complex geometry are all printed. Everything else is a standard screw or a standard component you can order off of AliExpress or McMaster Car or wherever else. And then the fire control group is interchangeable with uh, a standard AR-15 group, fire control group. But in the, the technical technical download, the packet mm -hmm. for all of this... Um, has like the links to the alley stuff you can order for like your replacement, your your airsoft uh, counterparts, 
yeah. then up there the barrel and the the the, the this, ECM this barrel thing. there up front. Yeah. So this is metal here. Yep. Okay, and then this looks like a metal spring as well. So there's yep. some metal parts, but you know, for the right. most part, this is all little 3D printed parts. All these different spots. Yep. Interesting. And then oh, of and course, as you said, they're interchangeable with actual. Uh, I mean, I'm say actual guns because they basically are real guns. It's just right. uh, with metal guns. Really, is the more accurate way of of saying that. Yeah, it's interesting. So that's uh, that's cool. So that's uh, so that's 3D printed guns, huh? Nice. It doesn't that's, seem uh, the 101, right? Yeah, we, we, right. We try to, really easy. to to bring it to that level where it's digestible for someone to look at it and say, okay, this is something I can do, and then start because that's that that's the number one hang, hang up is like people will say, okay, this is cool. It sounds complicated. I don't know anything about it, and then they won't start. Yeah. So th this makes it just a little bit easier. So they can pull that trigger, and it's you know, the the way the way we tell people to look at it is, mm -hmm. you're making a two hundred dollar investment in a hobby, okay. which is not a lot of money to invest in a hobby. Okay. Like think about what whatever else you're involved. A guitar back there is you know yeah. several hundred dollars, if not several thousand dollars. A skateboard, a couple hundred bucks. I, I don't know. I don't. Skate. Well, someone actually to... sent me that. Okay. Okay. Fair. So. Fair. But I, I'm just saying, like, hobbies are, are expensive. 200 bucks is not a lot for a hobby. And yeah. if you don't like it, you're only out 200 bucks. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. do like it, you spent 200 bucks. You got a, you got a, you got a printer that will let you print all of this stuff here yeah. and many, many other things. Um, so you're, you're not, you won't be left behind at all by someone else getting some fancier printer, um, you know, down the road.